Hello viewers, welcome back to Sahara TV. My name is Adeola Fayong. And today on our highlight segment, we'll be talking with Buso Drame. And she is a policy specialist and an international consultant working in Dakar. And the reason we are talking with Buso today is because of her experience uh, with the French embassy in Senegal, because she's actually from Senegal, as well as the French Institute in Senegal. So she's going to tell us a little bit about that, but um, she will also talk about the experiences of so many other Senegalese when it comes to dealing with foreign embassies and just to talk about Africans in general and some of the things that we have to go through when we relate with embassies of uh, some other countries. So um, in 2000, in earlier this year, Boso actually won a national spelling competition, uh, which was organized by the French Institute in Senegal. And because of that, she won a return flight ticket to Paris. But at the end of the day, she returned it back. I will tell you, uh, she will tell you why she had to give it back to them. Now, Busso actually had her master's degree in international affairs from uh, po Science Po in Paris. And also she had an MSc in international political economy from the London School of Economics. Busso, Busso welcome to Sahara TV. Hi, Adiola. Thank you. All right, it's so good to have you on. Uh, so, but just for the sake of our viewers that, that are not familiar with your story, you won a national competition and you got a return ticket to um, Paris, but at the end of the day, you were like, I don't want it, even after you got it. What happened? Well, exactly. Uh, what happened is um, I participated in Senegal's national French Spelling Bee competition, which the French Institute organizes on a yearly basis. And I've been participating in this context since I was a teenager. And this year, I, I was crowned champion. So as part of the winner's package, we had a round trip to Paris. We had accommodation covered, a daily per diem, and also a two-week learning program in documentary filmmaking in France. And the reason why I decided to renounce the trip is uh, because of the condescending way in which I was treated by the organizers of the trip, which were the French Institute, and also the French embassy in Dakar, with whom I had to deal um, to get my visa processed. In what way were you treated? What are some of the things that they said to you? Let's start from the French Institute that you did not like. Exactly. So with the French Institute, actually, there were three instances of condescension. The first one happened by email. You know, uh, the runner-up lives in St. Louis. It's in the northern part of the country. I live in Dakar, and we had to set up um, an appointment in order to discuss the logistics of the trip. And because of our busy schedules, it was really difficult for us to agree on a date. So I took the initiative to contact my runner-up and to try to find a date that would work for the two of us. And after doing that, I emailed back the organizers of the trip to tell them to propose a date. So the lady uh, responded to me, and I found her response quite surprising. She told me, it's not up to you to decide on an appointment. We are the French Institute, and we decide when we want to meet you. So when I saw that response, um, I decided to call her in order to clarify my intention. Um, I was not deciding on an appointment. I was proposing an appointment, and I was doing so in order to help them. So when I called her and I told her that, she responded to me, do you realize that you have won a very beautiful trip to Paris? And um, it's an all expensive trip. Don't you think that we will let you wander in France and go idle? So I clearly didn't appreciate the response. And I told her it's probably a very beautiful trip, but I'm not impressed. You know, France is not an El Dorado for me. And this does not exempt you from treating me with respect. So when I told her that, she obviously changed her tone. And then that was the first instance of, 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 this, of, of condescension. Wow. The second one um, happened at the French Institute when we decided, when we agreed on the date and we had the meeting finally. Then we had a second lady who's different from the one I talked to on the phone. And the second lady, basically, she started by giving us some paternalistic and vexing recommendations, like uh, don't other spend your generous PTM in shopping because there are many, many beautiful things to buy in Paris. Then she said uh, something else which I found quite funny. She said that when you go to Paris, make sure that you settle your hotel bill, because if you don't do so, you would ruin the opportunity for the upcoming winners. So I kind of jumped on my seat because I was very uncomfortable with that sentence she said. So I told her, do we look like vids? Do we look like free riders? 
And she responded to me, you can never tell up front who is a thief. You can never tell up front who is a free rider. We have to treat everybody the same way. And I think this response is not is not correct. Because if we were uh, French-speaking Canadian winners, I don't think she would have talked to us that way. Is she doing so because we are black? Is it because we are African? Is it because we are from poor countries? I don't think that is okay. So that was the second instance. And then the third and last instance of confrontation happened um, at that same meeting. We were um, talking about um, a, a paper that the French Institute had to send the consulate, telling them basically these two winners are traveling under my purview. They are going to France for this training. Please grant them a visa from this day to that day. And because I wanted to stay three additional days at my own cost in Paris to spend time with family and friends, so I requested if this could be mentioned to the consulate. And when I asked for that, I saw the ladies. They were very uh, reluctant. So I asked if there was a problem. And they told me, well, the consulate will think that you want to illegally migrate to France because you asked for three additional days. So I think that was quite strange. So I told them, I'm not illegally migrating. I would be covering for my own extra stay. And then if there is a proof for any paper, I'm going to provide it to them to prove them that I'm going to return. And to prove that I'm willing to come back and to return, I'm the one who chose to return to Africa after being trained abroad because I want to serve my country, I want to serve my continent. So I have no interest going and going idle in, in France. So when I went back home, I was quite frustrated with the whole meeting, with their conclusion and, and, and their then, reluctance about it. And country. then you got to the embassy and what happened, briefly? Yeah, when I went to the embassy, I was um, welcomed by a lady who was very arrogant, very um, um, very unpleasant. So I said hi to her. She did not respond. Um, when she was taking my fingerprints, she was literally shouting at me as if I was a two-year-old kid. Um, and then we had a problem with the, the, the papers because two of my papers were inadvertently inverted. And she was also shouting, this is always the same thing with you, Senegalese. When you come, your papers are not in order. They are not fine, etc." So I didn't really appreciate that, but I said, it's fine. Let me just deal with it. It's almost, it's almost over. And uh, when, I, when I went to, to pick up my visa the next day, they told us that the French Institute had forgotten to join a paper, which was our travel insurance. But I had it with me because my runner-up had informed me the day before. So the lady actually refused to take the paper. She told me you have to come back tomorrow between 7 and 9 a.m. And I told her, I think you should take it because the paper is right here. Why do you want me to come back the next day? She said to me, I'm not taking your paper. You have to come back the next day. And she was very rude and very arrogant as usual. So I told her, I don't think it's okay for you to talk to us this way. And I think a little smile would, wouldn't hurt. And she told me, I'm not paid to hand out smiles or to be courteous. You know, I told her that I think this is a problem. And this is the very reason why the French are having such a bad reputation throughout Africa. And then she responded to me, you know, this is, I don't really care what you think. Your opinion is not important. And then I told her my opinion is important because I'm a citizen of my country. I have a voice. And I think it's absolutely wrong for you to come in our country and to treat us as if we were underdogs. This is not acceptable. And believe me, this story will not end here. And this is when I left the embassy. I was very saddened. And then I decided to renounce the trip for the symbol, to renounce the trip, to get a message across to the embassy and to get a message across to my fellow citizens and to my fellow African brothers and sisters. Well then, viewers, there you have it. <laughs> That's just the whole story right there. So she won that prize, but then now you know why she gave it back and renounced that visa. And so Busso actually decided to write an open letter to the French embassy and that had been published by so many publications, even international uh, papers, and uh, that made huge news that someone won a Paris visa and gave it back because she was pissed off. So, um, but I'm wondering, Busso, if anything has changed since you wrote your letter. But before you answer that, let me just read some of the things that you wrote in your letter. You said that it's high time for Africans to respect themselves and to demand that they be respected by others. Yes. So has anything changed since you wrote that letter? Did they respond to your letter? Well, I, I had a response um, first the next day after the publication of the letter from the, um, the head of the French consulate, who basically 
did the very same thing I am I'm criticizing. His response was full of condescension. He said that I should have contacted him first before deciding on writing a letter or not. He uh, denied the situation that I was criticizing. He said that my case was an isolated case and that people who come to the embassy are very happy about the way they were treated, that actually 82% of visa seekers are highly satisfied, or satisfied about the way they are treated. And then I responded to him on my Facebook page, saying that I'm not his employee, it's not up to him to tell me what I'm supposed to do, and that, you know, I don't understand where these <laughs> You are a tough from. woman. <laughs> um, but are you trying and to... I told her that, you know, yes. So, so to answer your questions, have things changed? They have changed because some people I know, many actually emailed me after my letter to tell me that when they went to the embassy, they were greeted with smiles from the security guard to the clerk people. That is the first time that this happened to them. Probably they thought that these were mini pusher dramas coming back. I don't know. But in any case, things have changed. And to confirm that, the French ambassador gave an interview two weeks ago to the Senegalese media, and he was asked about this affair, this Rame case, and he recognized that there was a problem, that I was not treated the right way, and that there's a problem with the way Senegalese are treated at the embassy, and he gave clear instructions for this to change. So I believe that there is an impact, because people told me about it, and the supreme authority of the French in Dakar recognized it and decided to take action. So are you saying, Buso, that your case was not an isolated case, mm -hmm. that uh, you were not the only one that had been treated like that in the past? No, I'm not the only one. I know so many people who went through that. And uh, I've been receiving thousands and thousands of messages of appreciation and testimonies. And people have shared very sad stories about how they were treated. And if we have time, I could share one quick example with you. But if you don't have time, just... Some no, go, go ahead. Share the burning. one experience, the one example. Okay. Go ahead. It's a Senegalese. It's a Senegalese gentleman who wrote to me to tell me about a story that happened to him a few years back. His wife, who was living in Paris, had passed away, and he had to go to Paris to get the corpse of his wife so he could bury her in Senegal. And when he went to the embassy to ask for a visa, they told her that they suspected him to illegally want to migrate in France. And the gentleman was so sad. He told them, how can I illegally migrate? I'm going to get my dead buddy, wife. And why do you think I would do such a thing? And they told him, okay, you can go to France, but when you pick up your buddy's wife, your, your wife's corpse, you have to come back to the embassy and prove to us that you are not going to illegally migrate. And that gentleman had supported me in his letter. And he said to me, if I had not the obligation to go and bring my wife back, I would have denied that visa, but I could not do that. To honor my wife, I had to go and get her back. Wow. And that is something that really moved me to tears. And I think this is one proof that my situation is not an isolated case. Wow. But, uh, Buso, let me ask you, why do you think that Africans have been treated this way? Um, is, it, is it something that we Africans need to do or uh, is it something that um, they need to do? I mean, there has to be a reason why they would feel like it's okay to treat us like this. Definitely. I think it's a combination. The first reason is I believe that we have a responsibility in the way we are treated. The truth, and it's a sad truth, is that some of our fellow Africans and fellow Senegalese pretend to go to Europe on short trips and they never come back. And this has happened more than once. And obviously, I understand that it's a problem that has to be treated. But I believe that dealing with that problem should not exempt these embassies from treating us with respect. The second reason why I think this is happening is because we are a poor, we are poor country. We are black. Uh, we have a historical legacy with colonization, with, with the slavery first, then colonization. And I think in some people's mind, some Westerners' mind, it's okay to treat us with contempt. And they think that we Africans will deserve that, will accept that. What so about, what, what about that us fixing our countries as well? What about the fact that we are also not developing our countries as we should? Do you think that has anything to do with it? Oh, definitely. That has, because some of us don't believe in, 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 in Africa. They don't believe in consuming African. They don't believe in working the land and developing our own countries. They are waiting for some messiah some external savior who's usually, you know, Western. And I think we have our responsibility in believing in ourselves, in working and developing our countries, in building 
um, governance system that we allow everybody to express their talent and potentialities. And if we don't believe in our own land, no one else will do it for us. I see. Uh, so my last question, Buso, is if you can just speak with some African leaders, African uh, presidents and, you know, uh, politicians who are uh, laundry money to France and other places instead of using that to develop Africa and we regular people have to go through some of what you've been through. So if you if you have the power to speak to politicians who can make differences in African countries, what would you say to them? I would tell them to have empathy for the population. You cannot be a leader if you don't um, respect, if you don't understand, if you don't care for the people you're supposed to lead. I think it's very important for them to listen and to have what I love to call caring leadership. If you don't care for your people, you will use your position of power as a way to enrich yourself, to enrich your clan, to enrich your family. And this is not what leadership is about. Leadership is about sacrificing yourself for the greater good of the community. And the second advice I would give and I'm not even giving that to the African leader, but I'm giving it to us. I think us, when I say us, I mean us populations and citizens. We have a responsibility in picking our leaders. We tend to pick leaders based on charisma, based on you know family affiliation, based on political affiliation. And we don't even look at who the person is. Does, it, does this person have a track record in caring for the community and genuinely serving the community? And I think it's extremely important for us to make wiser decisions and to realize that our voting card is a weapon. It's a very powerful weapon, and we have to be aware of our role in building our society. I see. Thank you so much, Buso, for coming on Sahara TV today. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, we definitely enjoyed Thank you your for interview. Having me. Sure. <laughs> all right, viewers, that has been Buso Drama, and I'm sure that you've enjoyed all that she talked about her experience at the French Institute as well as the French Embassy in Senegal. Uh, stay tuned. We still have more to come. We'll be right back.